August 24th, 2023. I want to go over a few of the tornadoes that occurred on this evening. This video will focus in particular on the Williamston tornado. I'll go ahead and say Williamston. It's easier to say, and it's also where the bulk of the damage happened. So the Williamston tornado happened about 9.30 p.m. August 24th. The overall night was shaping up as a convective complex. We call it a squall line, a QLCS, an MCS. You'll hear it referred to a lot of different things, but I'll use the term QLCS, short for quasi-linear convective system. Simply means a lot of wind is expected with a lot of heavy rain, a lot of lightning, maybe some hail, and also, depending on the wind shear that day, the potential for spin-up tornadoes. Now, when we talk about spin-up tornadoes with NQLCS complexes, we usually are referring to weaker style tornadoes, so EF0, EF1, that's on the ground for maybe five, uh, upwards of 10 minutes at most, but usually very short-lived, hard to detect on radar, and usually become very, or usually are rated very weak. The uh, Williamston tornado was an exception to this. I'm gonna show you why. So overall, we have this line of storm stretching from Canada all the way down to basically Indiana, about 190 miles in total from Sarnia to the um, border of Indiana, about 180 to 190 miles, depending on where you uh, measure from, from. But I wanna focus on one area of this line in particular, and that is right up here along the Lansing Southeast area. This squall line in particular within this main complex of storms. So what happens on these days when we get these bow echoes in this line is we have wind that pushes this bow echo forward. We call this the apex out here where it butts out like a bow, like a bow and arrow. We call this area right about here the apex where the very strongest winds are occurring. That's usually because we have a jet or a, some inflow winds behind this pushing it outwards. So when we have this inflow wind behind this bow echo, it pushes it outwards, but also when that happens, air rushes on top of this this way because it's moving out so fast. So the combination of the inflow winds pushing the storm out and the storm causing winds to circulate back in, the combination creates some rotation on the very top of these bow echoes. We call it a bookend vortex. That is the case here with Williamston. Now I zoom in here, the tornado is actually on the ground at this point in time. You can see it on radar. Another indication this tornado was very powerful. You can see that purple dot indicating that there was rotation and also the debris being fluffed in the atmosphere. If we look on our velocity product, you're gonna see that couplet right there where I circled. But I wanna focus on a few different things here. Number one being the overall evolution of this. If I back this up, to around 940, I'll go ahead and do 942, and then I'll go ahead and take a split panel view here. We're gonna take our wind velocities on the bottom. I'll go ahead and zoom in here to Williamston. We're gonna see how this evol or, uh, how this came to be. Go ahead and animate the radar. You're gonna see it touch down just outside of Williamston at around 931, and that pushes toward Weberville, dropping south 96 and ending near Handy Township. So first off, I'll go back to the scan, the 931 scan on my radar, go ahead and zoom back here to 931. We're gonna see this tornado actually did touch down approximately 1.5 miles south of the town of Williamston. Williamston got incredibly lucky because this, at this point in time, the tornado was at its strongest intensity up until where it crosses 96 down here by Weberville. So along 96 here, we had three of the wooded areas that got completely snapped in half. Um, some of the trees were um, just unrecognizable at this point. So the tornado was at its strongest intensity at that point in time. Go ahead and zoom back to the 936 scan. The tornado was at its strongest on radar. And I'll go ahead and uh, answer some questions as to why this tornado was thrown out to be a EF4 tornado, which it was not. So when we look at the mainly the velocity, I'll go ahead and switch over here to full velocity. We're going to see these intense colors here. We're going to see the reds and the greens this time in the blues, which is very rare here to see in Michigan. So we have 110 miles per hour on this side and approximately 54 on this side. So let's just say 110 and 50 miles per hour. Add those two together, you get what we call gate to gate shear. 160 miles per hour where the inbound and outbound winds meet, it creates a couplet. And the intensity of that couplet on this side of 54 and this side 111, 110 essentially bringing 160-ish 
miles per hour of gate to gate wind speeds. So the 160 on that term would be high end EF3, low end EF4 status, which is why you had people on Twitter and on social media saying this was an EF4. It was not an EF4. Tornadoes are rated by the damage they do and they are surveyed the day after the tornado happens. So we're never going to know what a tornado is as it happens. We're going to know after the event. So when people throw the ratings out, you know, before it is actually surveyed, surveyed by the NWS, it's irresponsible. So don't believe people who throw out the ratings as soon as the tornado happens. It's based off data and data alone. So another thing to look at what this tornado could do here with 160 miles per hour of gate to gate wind speeds, but also the CC. Go ahead and switch over here to the CC product. You're going to see this debris ball was large. It was also very deep. It was very, when, you see those, when you see those blue and grays within that debris ball, that means the debris is being lofted at a very high altitude. When we, took a, we take a cross section look at the storm, we're going to see this debris ball showing up all the way up to 15 to 20,000 feet in the atmosphere. So one football field is 300 feet. This tornado was lofting debris 15 to 20,000 feet off the ground. Similar tornadoes with the intensity of about 160 miles per hour on the wind gate to gate winds and also lofting debris up to about 20,000 feet would be equivalent to historical data suggesting this tornado could be the size and strength of an EF4 tornado. But the NWS went out and surveyed and we went out and surveyed as well. None of the damage that we saw or that was surveyed indicated this was an EF4 tornado. For an EF4 tornado, you're talking about homes that are completely leveled, nothing standing of the home. We're talking about trees that are unrecognizable. We're talking uh, cars that were thrown several hundred yards, not just flipped on the highway like we had, but thrown several hundred yards. We're talking a very powerful tornado. This tornado may have been EF4 intensity on radar, but the damage that it caused was equivalent with EF2, and that is how tornadoes are rated. So with that being said, it was an EF2 tornado with 125 mile per hour winds uh, that was on the ground for about 12 minutes and stretched about 12 miles from about Williamston just before it entered Fowlerville. The overall takeaway from this tornado is that we got extraordinarily lucky. So Williamston was missed by about a mile and a half. Weberville was missed by about a mile. Had this tornado gone through a more populated area, it would have been much worse and perhaps may have earned a higher rating. But overall in Michigan, this was a very significant tornado. Usually we get the EF0, EF1 type of tornadoes, but this was an EF2 tornado with potential to be even higher if it was more populated. Unfortunately, one person lost their life while driving on I-96. Three others were injured, multiple cars were destroyed. There was a total of about five to six barns that I counted that were destroyed completely. Two houses were, uh, should I say three houses sustained damage. Two of those damaged houses were significant roof damage. But overall, this tornado was EF2 status. It was not an EF4, but still a very significant and powerful tornado that is very rare occurring here in Michigan.